Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Midnight Texas. Another great episode. So many crazy things went down in this episode. Obviously, the whole reveal that Connor was the killer all along. Never necessarily would have saw that coming. It wasn't until the episode started progressing. I was like, it's not the dad, is it? It's actually Connor who's the killer. Because it threw me for a little, because I was thinking like, okay, the reason why I can't, the Creek and her entire family were in Midnight in the first place, like, okay, you're some kind of supernatural thing, and I'm starting to think maybe it tapped into like whatever supernatural thing that, because I thought when, like, example, when Tiffany died back when it was like episode three, I thought like he was biting her, but maybe he was killing her some other way, or maybe he was trying to, maybe he was trying to kill her in a, in a similar way that Lim would kill, like, I don't know, because the entire episode he tried to justify what he did. Because it's like, well, the Rev is what he is. He he could kill people and Lim and Olivia, but then, like, Creek's like, no, you, you idiot. Like, what are you talking about? They all, like, the Rev doesn't want to kill anybody. That's where he locks himself up to prevent himself from doing it. And Lim and Olivia, yeah, they might kind of do that, but they do it for justice. Like, it's never like they go out of their way like, oh, yeah, they enjoy killing. It's like he's the only one that kills for sport. So it goes back to the fact is that they are 100% a normal family. It's just that Connor has been basically a sociopath his entire life. It wasn't even just their mom's death. Because the entire thing is making it seem like, oh, the dad kind of snapped after his wife died. And that's why he's the way he is. And he's abusive towards Connor. I knew something was a little fishy the moment the whole Connor, like, getting knocked out. I was like, yeah, that's a little fishy. Like, the killer just knocked you out. Really? What do you... It's like, okay. Then it was like, well, then, you know, why would your dad knock you out anyway? Like, you know... Most likely, and that's another thing too, like the bruises, either that was from his dad or most likely it was like from the girl like fighting back against him, like who, who the last person he killed like fighting back against him, so... That took me for a loop because I thought that entire thing I thought was like some supernatural creature rolling up, it's like no, and it's something, that's something that um, Bobo kind of said it himself in the episode, this doesn't have to necessarily just be a supernatural thing, you know, even with everything supernatural happening around town, the fact of the matter is men are capable, you know, humans are capable of great evil themselves, so that was just crazy because the moment Manfred found that mask, I was like, holy crap, he's 100% the killer, and he's the one that's been behind, he's the one that killed Audrey, and he tries to justify it too, like, almost like, almost like, almost like he's a vigilante or something, like he was doing good, because it's like, oh yeah, they're terrible people anyway, Audrey, she was a white supremacist. Uh, Tiffany, she sold herself to vampires, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, what about this girl? I mean, granted, I guess his justification would be like, oh, she was with the people who tagged up Midnight, but it's like, she didn't actually do anything. She's an innocent girl just trying to make an excuse, you know, because to him, it's like, you know, trying to justify why he did what he did. And it just, it blew my mind that it, that whole situation turned out just to be a regular evil character. And I guess... Because that's what, it, it ends up pissing everyone at midnight off even more. It's because, dude, you've been living here for years. We've been having a killer here with us this entire time. And apparently Connor's been off killing, like, animals and stuff before now. And that's so interesting, too, because, like, I, I appreciate Creek's reaction to the whole situation. Because it's like, she's, like, cutting all ties to her dad. It's like, you chose your son over me. Like, you made me feel like it was my job to protect Connor. And it's like, you made me complicit in everything he did. You're just as guilty. I am, we're all just as guilty for everything that Connor did for all those poor girls, all those daughters that were missing that parents are worried about. And, when, you know, and it's just, it's crazy to me that things transpired the way they did. I'm curious, like, how much they actually reported to the police. I mean, I did not expect things to go down the way they did with Connor. Like, Connor's running away. He's out in the field. He's got a smirk on his face. Lim comes up and snaps his neck. I was like, dude! Because I was so certain they were just going to take him in. But then it's like, nah. This, because... What Connor did drew too much attention to Midnight. It's possibly bringing more police attention there. But now that, like, the girl Erin is okay at the end of the episode, like, especially because her mom's a judge, that would have turned into a whole situation. But it's at least one more person that's a lot, like, eased up on Midnight because, like, they helped her out and everything. They got the person, made sure he won't never hurt anyone again. Plus, Fiji helped patch her up a little bit. And it's like... She's going to walk away from this situation very positive towards Midnight because she even said to herself, like, she won't tell, she won't lie, but she's not going to tell the entire truth. She's just going to be like, hey, I got hurt and some awesome Midnighters uh, took care of me and made sure I was okay. So, because at the beginning, like, when her friends that ran off and everything that were kind of trashing the place, they're like, yeah, uh, no, 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 I don't want to kind of get mixed up with you people trying, you know, they're trying to offer to help look for uh, Aaron at the time, so... 
But man. Kind of flew out there about the dad. It's like, you know, maybe whatever's here at midnight is affecting him. It's like, no, like if he was evil, it's because of his own volition. He'd all like it doesn't make you just evil, it just feeds into the evil that's already there. So that's why Connor probably went on a killing spree the way he did, is because the what this whole veil situation start feeding into the darkness in him. And that's kind of an interesting way. Like, I maybe they brought it up earlier in the season, but I I, I kind of can't miss that. It, 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 it taps into the darkness in people. That's why the rev, like the darker side of him is his um whole weird tiger situation because it represents the dark inside of him so that just kind of was that that's just it's and it's actually kind of sad too for creep because in that one moment everything fell apart where she thought she had a happy family like she always thought she had issues with her dad sure but then thinking he's abusing her brother but then it turns out it's like no he's been protecting my brother who's a killer and it's just like in one instance she lost her brother but he was a serial killer but now she's lost her dad because it's like i can't be around you after so many years you've been protecting him so and it also kind of explain, and it also explains some things about why he was so overprotective about Creek because he didn't want. It wasn't specifically; it was about Creek and Manfred because I guess like he was afraid that if Creek got too close to anybody, maybe that become the next target for Connor or something like that. But the main reason why he hated Manfred in particular is because Manfred can see spirits, and it would have given the spirits would have given away about Connor's thing, and maybe that's why Connor, on some level, hated Manfred too. Why he kept calling him a con artist and trying to break them up. It's like you should stay away from. It's like no, it wasn't trying to be brotherly love. He was protecting himself. It was it, you know for his own like sake of trying to get away with everything. And it's just like holy crap. You knew it had to be something weird and crazy to it, but I didn't think it'd be something that weird and crazy that. Yeah, gosh, that I'm flabbergasted to that like whole situation, dude. But like what I was bringing up earlier is like now that the whole Connor situation is dealt with, I guess like, I think I think I kind of like elaborated on it. It's like because Aaron is okay, like there's not gonna be any investigation into it, so it makes you makes you wonder what they're gonna do with the other bodies too. Like Tiffany was kind of already on the road and everything anyway, so no one's not necessarily gonna miss her. But that still leads the whole Aubrey um crime. But then again, it's like. Her husband's not around, so it's still, like, plausible for him to still get blamed for it and everything, so. But obviously, like, the biggest part of this episode is Joe revealing himself. Because he, you know, the Rev kept telling him, it's like, you need to reveal yourself. Because everyone's acting a little crazy. Everyone's thinking something's wrong with them, like, Manfred's medicating because all the ghosts. It's kind of interesting, like, learning that, too, like, how much ghost, seeing ghosts puts a strain on him. It's like all that, like, energy, like, Basically, ghosts kind of like make him have that feeling like he has a hangover, like constantly every time he sees them. Especially the more and more they're popping up here in uh, midnight. You even had Lemuel talk about the fact is that he's kind of getting hungrier and hungrier. Uh, the Rev kind of going kind of wild and insatiable the way he is on full moons lately. Then you have Fiji with that whole demon situation of the demons like reaching out for trying to pull her in. Hiding because I brought it up like Chewie had brought it up before like you can't let anyone know because they are in hiding and once again I think it is a, and it's something that he kind of brings up later on he's like we can't you know they'll come looking because he's like that was his main reason because he wanted to protect his family but he knew when the moment came that they'd come looking for him if he revealed himself because to stop Connor and um oh, getting away with Creek he ended up using his light to kind of stop the uh, car. And that was pretty cool when he actually reveals himself and he takes off. And Manfred was like, am I the only one who didn't know? And everyone was like, nope, no, huh. Everyone was like, just like mouth the gape. And even Lemmy was like, that kind of explains some things. But immediately, and I've, I've, I've brought this up before, I think the people Joe is hiding from are other angels. He's a fallen angel. So he's here somewhere on Earth. They're probably aware that he's on Earth, but they don't know specifically where he is. And now that he used his power, he's basically... Revealed his location because they can probably track his powers and find him in midnight. But the conversation is like he brings it up to Chewie later on. Like he's giving calling Chewie. He's like, you can't come back here. The fact of the matter is I got to stay here and fight because if they find out about you, they'll exterminate me. Which kind of makes me go back to my original thought. What if Chewie is a demon? Because that would make this whole situation understandable why he, why he fell. I mean, then again, maybe him falling is something completely different. Maybe he had his issue with the way angels ran thing or some things. Maybe it's not even the fact is that him and Chewie are together. Maybe heaven doesn't know about that. Um, 
But nevertheless, like that's immediately where my brain goes because I feel like that'd be the most controversial relationship, uh, an angel and a demon, you know. And then it begs the question too because like it seemed like Chewie didn't really know about like the whole veil situation and the war, uh, because but he did comment that like you know this whole veil situation is going to affect him and he doesn't want to kind of be around like it's going to do something to. Him. So I think it's going to bring out the demon in him. But the point I was getting to is like. Joe's probably older than him. Joe's like at least a thousand plus, you know, years old because that whole war thing happened a thousand years ago. But Chewie didn't know, so maybe Chewie's more like five hundred, or maybe Chewie, like I brought it up before too. Maybe he's just something else entirely supernatural. But I feel like specifically, I think I'm my money's on demon, but I'm prepared to be like wrong about it. But that, that's where my money's been on for the longest time, like what Chewie is. So, and maybe that's extra reason why if like Chewie is a demon, even more reluctant to bring up the fact to say he's an angel because that ended up having to make him reveal who Chewie is. Because anytime the conversation like Fiji would throw the conversation into like, yeah, I'm, I'm attacked by a demon. It's like, yeah, she would be looking for this girl. I thought it was more so him protecting the whole veil secret thing because obviously that would tie in with him having to reveal himself. But maybe because if it if turns out that Chewie is a demon, maybe people will look at him a little bit differently or something like that. It's like, you're. I think what Joe will eventually find out is like, it's midnight, you know, no one judges. Everyone's got their whole thing. Everyone's got their secrets, you know, so. It's actually kind of interesting because at this point in time, everybody's past is out there in the open, except for Fiji. She's the only one, I mean, obviously the Rev, dude, we haven't dived too much into her past, but I guess arguably you could say this is us diving into at least Creek's family situation, so. I'm, like, I'm surprised a lot of this stuff is, like, getting, like, last episode we dealt with Manfred's whole, like, Hightower situation. Now we're dealing with Creek's situation with her family, and it just, you know, like I said, I was so certain it's going to be like, oh, there's some, some kind of supernatural thing that's being affected by the veil. It's like, nope, just regular people. So, Fiji and Bobo now. Um, Bobo was even asking Olivia, it's like, you know, does does Fiji hate me? It's like, no, she doesn't. It's like, you know, Olivia tried to make some try to make him feel better. It's like, she knows what I do. She doesn't like it, but she doesn't judge me. It's just, you know, obviously it's going to take Fiji a little while to um kind of get reacquainted like kind of readjust it to this whole situation because even like olivia had to put it like you were perfect to her like she put you on a pedestal and he's like yeah i fell right off but she's like yeah but there's always there's nowhere but up from here so i mean at least they're they're talking and everything at the end of the episode it's still a little awkward a little distant but i think given enough time maybe i mean we've kind of dived into bubble bass a little bit like obviously this past episode and everything but it's like I feel like there's a lot more to deal with on that situation because, like, I mean, everyone's technically got, like, family issues in this whole... I mean, Lim kind of dealt with his family issues. Like I said, Manfred's kind of dealt with his. Olivia's, hers is still a work in progress, and I guess so is Bobo's. I mean, granted, the people who know about Bobo have all been taken care of, so it's, like, arguably, it's, like... I mean, I doubt there's... I wonder, is there anyone else who knows that he's in town? I mean, there's always a possibility that one of the other, like, sons got away... And ended up telling his parents about him, or maybe Peter got a message to him, whatever the case may be. It's also interesting, too, like, I kind of, I was bringing it up earlier, but the whole, like, how they dealt with Connor's situation, that is typically how they've kind of dealt with every bad situation that's found its way to midnight. Pretty much every issue that's needed to be dealt with by the Midnighters ends with everyone dead. I, I don't, like, it's hard to say because obviously you have Manfred kind of being like, yeah, let's not, let's not do that. You know, but it's, it's, like, it's like, oh, that's how we dealt with the succubus. That's how we dealt with the vampires. It's technically how Bobo dealt with uh, the sons. Well, a combination of Bobo and Lemuel. Mostly Lemuel, but obviously Bobo too. Most situations in with the problem being resolved with said problem being killed so i wonder is that going to be something that they keep up forever i mean because i guess it's a situation of if they leave things unanswered like if they leave things kind of out in the open those are future problems that could come back i guess it's the storyline situation of like why worry about a situation that could come back to bite us in the ass later on and let's just deal with it now because i guess you know for example connor would ha he'd go to jail did it bring up all these questions about midnight draw much more attention their way so i guess that's one particular way and I guess that's the same thing for even for the vampires because if the vampires left eventually would have came back maybe even bigger numbers they would have told other vampires it would have turned into a whole situation so I mean you gotta understand their reasoning but it's just so interesting that they're all for like yep we're just gonna handle this the midnight way so granted not everyone's all about it obviously the Rev has his reservations and once again Manfred does too it makes you wonder as an angel does Joe too like how far does Joe feel on certain things like you know being a fallen angel and stuff like that does he still hold 
things in the same authority, like in the sense of like, is he okay with certain aspects? Like, how did he feel about them killing Connor? Like he, because it like it looked like he gave Lemuel the nod, so it's kind of like I guess maybe since he's a fallen angel, he doesn't feel like he has to be try and hold like people to some higher standard or something like that because this is all about protecting their home and i guess arguably you could say like that's why he ultimately did help out crate because uh he, he's like because joe's like i wouldn't have done it if it weren't for you and the like i think you would have because like the fact of the matter is this is his town these are the people he cares about you know they are part of his family so he's gonna fight tooth and nail for this place that's why he's you know staying to fight for the war so i don't know like overall like a, a very very good episode i mean I, i'm very interested to see how this whole situation continues you know the deterioration of the veil i mean it's now out there in the open and everyone knows and ex it understands what's going on whether that means they're prepared for it is a whole nother story but still i'm very interested to see what goes down in the next episode but really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.